Hello. Welcome to Car Expert YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe to get updates. We are trying to suss this out at 120 miles per hour on the long downhill back straight at Road Atlanta. It's pouring. Rivulets of water are streaming across the track. As is fitting and proper for the traditional sports car par excellence, at the top of the large and expensive 911 heap is the GT3. While the base is shaken by the encroachment of turbocharging on basic 911 models, the summit is, like mountain air, all natural. The GT3 was subject to a beyond galling recall due to faulty con rods with a penchant for ventilating crankcases and starting catastrophic fires, but storms crash upon every peak. Progress is inevitable for German engineers. The GT3 RS is the 911 reforged in those embarrassing fires. The GT3 itself was a false summit, but the RS is the real deal. Underneath the very purple bodywork, this is a lither and more athletic thing than the already superb GT3. Light weighting is accomplished with a healthy dose of carbon fiber on the engine cover and the front. The roof, with a slick looking depressed slash running longitudinally, is made of magnesium. That serves to lower the center of gravity, Porsche assures us. Even the rear silencer is made of titanium. In total, the RS is 22 pounds lighter than the GT3 is based on, seemingly small gains considering all the exotic materials, but less so considering what's been added back. The RS is also more powerful, thanks to a 200cc displacement increase. The regular GT3's 3.8 liter 6 was already bored out to its maximum, so the extra displacement comes from a longer stroke. That serves to lower the red line slightly, from 9,000 revolutions per minute to 8,800, although peak horsepower is the same, at 8,250 revolutions per minute, but horsepower swells to an even 500 and torque to 338 pound-feet, bumps of 25 horsepower and 14 pound-feet. This engine is a serious piece of equipment boasting dry sump lubrication, direct injection, and lightweight engine internals like titanium connecting rods. It breathes through those side intake scoops that confused everyone when the first spy shots of this vehicle surfaced, instead of feeding big intercoolers like on a 911 turbo, they cram air into the naturally aspirated RS's intake manifold. Neat stuff. The brilliance of the RS is that we never noticed a situation where we were caught out on track and the car had to intervene to bring things back to square. If that happened, it was tidied up imperceptibly. Whether or not the computers were lending a hand, the RS makes a better partner in the wet than the GT4. It's fun, too. Very fun. The GT4 made us want to back off after every disconcerting wiggle, and the RS made us want to push harder. It's addictive. It's also surreal. As we pull into the pit for the last time, we come back to the question of whether the RS is worth the $50,000 premium it commands over the GT3. We don't have an apples to apples comparison to draw upon. Our last stint in the GT3 was in the dry on a roller coaster of a southern Ohio road. Practical considerations, like the Boxster you could buy for the price difference between two cars separated by only 25 horsepower aren't really the metrics to use. What potential customer would? This is an object of lust that imparts a feeling of incredible prowess in terrible conditions. It invites you to take risks under difficult conditions, unfamiliar, cold, wet racetracks, for example, and rewards rather than lashes out in return. It's raining much harder now, and the GT4s are parked. They're too squirrely, and Haywood doesn't want anyone to loop. As the rain patters on the magnesium roof, our ride to the plane home waiting, we want another go at Road Atlanta, rain be damned.